Wolves nil, Arsenal two, and Arsenal are five points clear heading into the World Cup. We've dreamed of these days as Gooners. And although this wasn't the best performance, we come with a commanding 2-0 victory by the end of it. And it's a performance that is the hallmarks of champions. As always, if you're new around here, welcome to Why Football. This is where we react and review every single Arsenal game, every game this season I've reacted to, and every game I will react to. Although this will be my last for a while, of course, due to the World Cup. But we've got World Cup content coming right this way. So as always, I'm gonna give my thoughts on the match. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. As I said, I was not going to this game thinking it's going to be a comfortable win. I know Wolves are bottom and I know we are top, but there was no way this game was going to be comfortable. Look at Man City losing earlier to Brentford. With the way that the teams have now come out for the World Cup, all the squads have come out and a lot of Arsenal players are in there. It's when you can really start thinking about the World Cup. Discussions have already come out, pundits, players, managers, all talking about it. A lot of those players would have one eye on that World Cup and knowing I do not want to get injured today. Look at someone like Madison that got injured. Yes, it was precautionary him taking off, but a lot of players see that and go, am I really going to give it that extra yard knowing that I'm going to be needed for my squad to represent my country in a week's time? So I knew it's their last game before a break. Wolves going to be up for it. Their new manager as well, he was in the stands. They gave him a little uh, lap of honour before the game started. It was all in Wolves' favour going into the game, despite the fact they were bottom of the table. And it started to look a bit poor at the start. I mean, Arsenal, we've, we've, been, we've been spoiled at times to free-flowing, attacking football. Like, when we played against Chelsea, I was delighted with the football we played between the boxes. Unbelievable at times, splitting the lines. Partey, Xhaka, playing forward passes and incisive quick passes. In that first half, we had a lot of the ball, but the possession didn't really amount to anything. A lot of our passing was slow, laboured, left to right, backwards at times. It was like a training game. We were just trying to shift walls from left to right. We had a few notable chances through Gabriel Jesus, especially, that could have scored. But nothing I'd really say that we thought, ah, oh, definitely should have scored that. And Wolves definitely had their equal chances on the counter-attack. Xhaka coming off injured, I want to say, in the first five minutes definitely did not help us. It was almost as if he got injured before the game started because I didn't really see him make a challenge or anything. Just after a minute and a half, he pulled up injured. So I'm not sure if it was an injury or it was illness or something else. I just hope for him he doesn't miss the World Cup with Switzerland. He's so important to Arsenal Football Club. So it's good we kind of have a month and a bit off. So even if he is injured, he can come back for Arsenal when we continue, hopefully, our title charge uh, in the second half of the season. But yeah, when he came off, we lost a bit of our edge. Jack has been a massive part of the team this season. The way he's that box box player from defence to attack, he's a linkage between the lines. And Fabio Vieira coming on, it was an attacking change by Arteta. He had a lot of intent to throw more attacking players at the ball. And we know Vieira's not going to do a lot of the dirty work. So it was almost as if it became a party defensive midfield and then Fabio Vieira and Erdegaard attacking midfield. There wasn't really that bridge between defence and midfield. Uh, but between defence and attack and it kind of did show in that first half where a lot of our chances it was slow build up play and the one good chance we did have was on the counter that being said Arteta at half time gave his team talk and we came out the second half a little bit the same Wolves came out fired up as well but then we did what all champions do and what Man City have been doing over recent weeks not today though big up Ivan Tony, but in recent weeks find a way to win the football match and it was just a little bit of beautiful play I I said the whole game I was saying we're not playing well we look laboured we're almost as if settling playing not, just not really incisive football but then just something inside me said I think we're going to score I said, said I literally my dad was sitting next to me I said to my dad I said I've got a feeling we're going to score and 45 seconds later if that Gabriel Jesus plays a beautiful pass through to Fabio Vieira through the lines cutting open the defence and then we're in the money Fabio Vieira with a beautiful dink pass across the box and it could have been Erdegaard it could have been Saka. It ends up being Erdgaard that prods into the back of the net and that made it 1-0 to Arsenal and that was a big, big goal. Because I honestly think if Wolves did score that first goal in that game, it would have been tough for us because they were living and dying off the counter-attack. We then, after that goal, we eased up a little bit in a way as in like there was less tension around the ground and we started to play some more nice football. You could tell the weight was lifted off our shoulders and we actually started to express ourselves on the football and it looks some really good football at times in that second half a lot of our players weren't really in the game as much but 
They started to get on the ball and we eventually did score a second goal. It was Erdegaard again. It was Martinelli doing well to keep up with the right back. He then won the ball back, slipped in Zinchenko with a beautiful back heel pass. Zinchenko then had all the time in the world to pick out Martinelli, who then fired it, got saved, but then the ball falls to Erdegaard, who fires it into the bottom corner. A neat finish, no chance for Jose Sarr. And at 2-0 with about 20 minutes left, it fully was game over and we strolled through to go five points clear at the top of the table. Clean sheet, away win. We played eight away games this season as opposed to only six home games. And we're looking good. He's looking good, bro. He's looking really good for this football club. I'm going to pick out a couple of players that I thought had a really good performance today. Gabriel at centre-back. Obviously, it didn't go with the Brazil squad. I felt for him. He's had a decent season, a few mistakes here and there. But they've got a lot of good centre-back options, Brazil. Thiago Silva, Marquinhos, just to name a few. And... It was sad for him. But today, honestly, a candidate for man the match. He was unbelievable today. Outshone Saliba as well. I'm not comparing the two because they're both our centre-backs. But Gabriel today, interceptions galore. He even helped out his mate Saliba when Saliba gave the ball away on a, on a shoddy back pass to Ramsdale. At the end, also flipped the ball back to Ramsdale in one that Adama Traore collided with him. Without that header, Traore is through on goal basically to score. Colossal game from Gabriel at centre-back today. I thought it was absolutely outstanding. Erdgaard as well, of course, got his two goals, right place, right time. I've been talking about in my last reaction, saying how Erdegaard are wanting to reach the levels of De Bruyne. And how does he do that? He's just, he's not as good technically, but he's very good technically, Erdegaard. How he reaches the heights of someone like De Bruyne is by, uh, is by doing match-winning moments at the times we need him most. And today he came up with two match-winning moments. If he's not there in the right place, right time... We don't score those two goals, maybe. And we don't sit here saying we're five points clear at the top of the table. So Erdogan today came through big in the big time for this football club to come up with two big moments to get this club over the line for three points a day. As well, I'm looking at the wingers. This is where I'm starting to think this is actually a team of maybe champions, you know. Because Saka, I didn't think he had a great game at all. I thought it was quiet. Martinelli equally, I thought he was quiet. I didn't think he had a good game either. Jesus... He was his usual busybody, but he wasn't clinical at all in front of goal and at times even wasteful. So I'm looking at it thinking, none of our front three played well, yet we still got a win away from home. Why did we get the win? The defence. Defence wins championships, wins titles. How many times have you heard it? Clean sheet. If you get clean sheet, the minimum you get is a draw. And that defence was rock solid today, man. Wolves had chance on the counter-attack. Look, you're playing the Premier League. It's very rare you come up against a team, no matter how bad they are, bottom of the table, top of the table, etc., that don't come up with chances. Every team is, to a certain standard, good in this Premier League. But we defended really well, I'd say. Their best player, well, I say their best player, is not their most dangerous player, Adama Traore. Running through at times, but we doubled up on him, tripled up on him, and we got the challenge in. Made some cynical fouls at times as well. I like to see those if it's my team committing them. Playing football with an IQ, with our brain. And we did exactly what we needed to do to get the three points. We can't complain whatsoever. We're doing what we need to do. And that's from attack to defence. The whole team is gelling. The whole team is performing. And when the attack's not firing, the defence is. And when the defence is leaking goals, the attack is firing. So <laughs> we're literally making up for each other, both sides of the team. And it was a really satisfying three points for me. Especially knowing we didn't play very well. And especially knowing that Man City also dropped three points today, thanks to an Ivan Tony masterclass. Let's get into player ratings to round off this video. It's a bit sad it's the last one before the World Cup, but it is what it is. Delighted to see Arsenal get the three points. In goal, Aaron Ramsdale. Like I said, our defence was solid. Ramsdale didn't have a lot to do, but everything he did have to do, he did perfectly. 8 out of 10. Great catches on their shots. No spillages. The worst thing is when you shoot at the goalkeeper and he spills it into this danger area. Because then it's anyone's ball. It's a 50-50 at times. When they shot at him, he either palmed it out for a corner or he caught the football. That's what I want to see from Ramsdale. Great performance from him. Ben White, 8.5 out of 10. His rating got boosted because he played one of the passes of the season that second after Gabriel Jesus. Literally right foot. It must have been at least 78 yards. The way he just absolutely caressed that ball over the defence over to Gabriel Jesus. If he had more form about him, he would have gone through and scored. He cut back, tried to play Erdgaard, kind of fell through at the end, but that was a great pass from Ben White. Overall, very solid game from him. William Saliba, I'm actually going to give him a 7.5 out of 10. At times solid, at times very oh, making mistakes. I'd say uh, rush at times. There was one time when he played the ball back, just a blind pass to Ramsdale. Maybe it's his age, maybe it's his naivety, but we can't have time that that like, cost us. Fortunately, his mate Gabriel helped him out today. And speaking of Gabriel, 9 out of 10 for me. 
Brilliant performance from Gabriel in today's game. Colossal at the back, cutting out everything that needs to be cut out. And, he, and if he performed like he did today on a consistent basis, he would have been number one on that Brazil team sheet going to Qatar. Left back, Zinchenko, also a decent game, man. Like, we see him filling in for midfield, and it was very important he did that, especially with Xhaka out. We lost a lot of that midfield presence, as I said, and a lot of that linking from defence to attack. But I thought Zinchenko had a superb game today at left back. Going to give him a 7.5. Now I'll give him an 8 out of 10, actually. Moving into the midfield, Thomas Partey. Got a silly yellow card, tripping up the player. But other than that, he's just solid, isn't he, in there, man? Missed his buddy next to him, Granite Xhaka, but he just pulled the strings, anchoring that defence solidly. Eight and a half out of ten for Thomas Partey. We big boy miss him when he's not in that team. Granit Xhaka, I'm not going to rate because he didn't really play. Fabio Vieira came on as a sub early, came off as a sub late as well. And I'm giving Fabio Vieira an eight out of ten. I'm not a massive fan of the kid, I'm going to be honest. I think he needs to hit the gym and bowl cup big time. But when we need him, he made that beautiful run in behind. Gamble to go past the ball and then play the beautiful scoop pass into the box for the assist on the first goal. So great from there from Fabio Vieira. And at the end of the day, we need match winners at the right times. And he was one of those today. Erdgaard, further up the pitch, also 9 out of 10. I'm going to give him the man match over Gabriel just due to his two goals. But Gabriel equally deserved it. But Erdgaard was brilliant today as well. Two great goals to cap it off. And then the front three, like I said, didn't have their greatest game. Saka and Martinelli, I'm both going to give them a 7 out of 10. I thought at times they were very, very quiet. Didn't really do much on the offensive end. Didn't really take on the defenders much. Kinder Bueno, to be fair. I don't know his first name, but his surname was Kinder. I mean, his surname was Bueno, so I just called him Kinder Bueno the whole time. He was doing really well on Saka, making a lot of tackles. Saka was finding it tough. I was actually even surprised we didn't try and swap the wingers. Arteta usually does that in the game when he feels like they're not getting the best out of them. Put Saka on the left, Martinelli on the right. That's the perks of having a fluid front three. He didn't really do that today. They stuck to their positions and they were kind of snuffed out at times. I guess that's what happens when you play a 5-4-1. A lot of the space out wide is catered for. And then up front, Gabriel Jesus, a 7.5 out of 10 I'm going to give him. Once again, could not find himself on the score sheet, but was his usual busybody. In terms of subs, I'm not really going to rate them because I didn't have a lot of time. The only sub that had a lot of time was Fabio Vera right at the start. But overall, Arsenal come away with another big, big three points, especially with Man City losing earlier. Let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts of the game and whether you believe Arsenal are in a title hunt. Well, they must be now at this stage. But whether you, who you think is going to win the league, Arsenal or Man City? I'm asking a question. It may be early, but I'm still going to ask it. As always, if you're new around here, make sure you subscribe down below if you love Arsenal Football Club on my road to 1000. I've been White Football and I hope to see you all in my next video.